I'm Layla. I'm Adrian. And this is S3. Come with us as we experience this incredible 18 course menu. Relatively plant focused, uh, where everything else kind of takes a, takes a supporting role. Um, the best farmers, fishermen, cheesemongers, foragers that we're very lucky to work with as well. So we're going to begin with an aqua dolce bean wafer, horseradish vinegar gel, fresh broad bean, and a broad bean butter. I have smoked pike pertro and Elysian flowers. Beautiful first summer bite. The broad beans were just picked last week in the farm as a beautiful fresh element. And the acidity in the chowro combined with the broad beans add a really interesting, unique flavor, light and crush. Confit, duroc pork, and smoked eel, fritto, crunchy onion, and tapioca, and then a fermented sweet corn puree. The base of the snack is a lovage emulsion. Crispy onion outside and smoked pork, smoked eel, along with the green underneath. Really, really fun. Hello, I'm uh, Paul Burgelier and I'm a chef for Long Clume Restaurant in Cartmel. My parents are butchers in France, ninth generation of butchers. When I had to choose what I have to do as a job, I, cooking came pretty easily. Went to London for a bit, moved to Copenhagen, and from Copenhagen I came back in UK to work for Simon, and it'd be six years now. Berkswell cheese pudding, layers of Wassel baked with a cheese custard, caramelized in birch sap, birch oil cheese grated. You get like this liquid brown sugar taste when you eat into the croissant. Normally you think croissant would be light and fluffy, but they've condensed it and just added sugar and cheese in between. The perfect combination of sweet and savory. That bite was decadent. I think the hand towels are soaked in the herbs that some of the herbs they have in the garden. Unbelievable. My name is John Rowland and I'm the farm manager at Simon Rogan's farm here in Cartmel. Our dish pays tribute to our farmer. We've named it John Rowland Succulents. On the bottom of the plate, we have a yogurt, which has been seasoned with some meadow sweet, two different types of peas, little tajet flowers and some barge flowers. And we've just poured over a pea sauce, which we make from the husks of the peas. And then we split that with some marigold oil. Oh my God. This is a perfect example of seasonality. Dramatically improved flavor, texture. This dish is homage to Farmer John that we met. We saw all the work that he puts in to really bring these ingredients to life and it sings on a plate. We are biodynamic. We feed plants plants. We don't use any pesticides or herbicides or anything at all on the farm. So the forage actually brings in the right insects to take out the, the bad insects. Cornish crab, some pink fur apple potatoes cooked in chicken butter, tops with its crispy skin, and then a sturgeon puree, some angsum summer shoots, and a sturgeon butter, and in between it, with some treats from our bacon, Nikki. We plant 30 uh, pots a week. He's using uh, potatoes just this size. We grow them for 13 weeks, and that's got a nicer, sweeter, softer texture. Flavor profiles here is just elegant and refined. This must have been in life. <laughs> really what comes through is that bone broth. You don't really taste the seaweed custard. Deep, rich beef broth, like stock that you feel like has been boiled for a week. The richest, most beautiful thing I've had in a long time. Every goddamn thing. Yeah, another unbelievable dish. A zucchini is Roasted on roasted, like it's caramelized, but it's still soft. They definitely added some sort of miso butter or sugar underneath of it. It's just so rich and deep. Summer savory brine lettuce. Now we have some barbecue hen of the wood mushrooms, which are being glazed in a fermented vegetable sauce. And just here for you, I have a creamy emulsion of butterfly vinegar, which I'm just going to dollop on top of that. The baby bib lettuce that we saw earlier on the farm was brined and then grilled. It literally tastes like grilled meat, except crunchier. Better, actually, than, than grilled meat. And those Hand of the Woods mushrooms are so deep and rich. There's elderflower foam. It's light and it's refreshing. Every dish continues to blow us away. The, the fishermen who, who get the Morcombe shrimp, they're like five minutes away from us. So, you know, the, you get a message on the day before, I'm going for shrimping how many kilos you need. Have some West Coast turbots. You could steam very, very gently just to set the protein on top. 
you have some raw cuttlefish ribbons dressed in rendered pork fat, some lemon verbena flowers, some New Zealand spinach leaves, and then a Morecambe Bay shrimp sauce infused with lemon verbena. We use mainly Lake District Farmer. The beef comes from like about 10 miles from here. It makes so much more sense and uh, everyone cares more about the, the end product. Age Cumbrian sailor. Grilled them in a ransom vinegar. Truffle puree as well. Raised beef tendons and done as a, a beef juice. Basically we've infused it with a little bit of ransom vinegar and also tapioca pills. Brioche. So we've laminated them in bone marrow a little bit of ramps. It's basically going to be raised on top of black garlic from the ocean. You just soak up that aged meat and this beautiful preserved truffle broth. It's warm. They've added tapioca pearls, just adds an extra textural element. This is our Turnworth ice cream, so it's pretty much like the French brie. It's made by hand in the south of England, and we make it to an ice cream with it. On top of it, you're going to find more crumb and caramelized buckwheat, a compote of rhubarb, seasoned with a little bit of champagne water, you know, why not? The bowl is, it has been dunked in liquid nitrogen. It's that cold. It starts brie, and then it goes just cold and crunchy. At the end is just sweet rhubarb. Because of the cheese, this dish wants to be funky, but it can't. The rhubarb at the bottom is mixed between a sorbet and its natural like form. It's silky and smooth, but it has a little bit of stringy texture to it. Like every other dish, perplexed by how they did this, but enjoying every single bite. In the back, I'm just getting like burnt butter and aged cheese, which I did not taste when I ate that dessert. This is phenomenal. Here we've got a dessert based around Malvina strawberries, which have been compressed in their own juices, then covered in a strawberry syrup. Underneath, you've got a Woodruff mousse and a yogurt cake, topped with a sweet Sicily sorbet and some dehydrated sweet Sicily sponge. This has been on the menu for over a decade, and it pays tribute to our building's history as a blacksmith. So we call this the anvil, but the French speak is long plume. It is a set salted caramel mousse, and it has another miso running through it. We've got peach leaf ice cream hornets with a white chocolate and elderflower ganache. Then these are our Kendall mint cake ice cream stains. And two of them are edible, so please choose wisely. If they move their food, that's that's the clue. Caramelized pear tartlets with a pineapple sage oil. Finally, two pine nut brownies. 